In the 1994 direct-to-video special, We Wish You a Turtle Christmas, children are given a much-needed reminder about the true meaning of the holiday season from the Ninja Turtles. And honestly, if I have to find out that Christmas isn't all about mindless consumption and selling toys, I'm glad I could hear it from the characters who were created solely for the purpose of mindless consumption and selling toys. They should be really knowledgeable on the subject. They even knew how to replace an adjective with the noun turtle in their title. And that's a skill that's not as easy as it looks. See, I forgot to put in the word turtle again. I'm not going to be able to do this until we nail down what an adjective is. Guess I'm going to Facebook message my middle school English teacher. Hi, Barb. You alive still? We don't have time to wait for this. Let me just see. Oh, it's a memorial page. We got to move on. This pine scented sack of early 90s nostalgia brings us some truly cringe inducing Christmas songs with lyrics adapted for the sewer, some of the lowest quality Ninja Turtle costumes ever captured on VHS tape, and a chorus of underprivileged street children who are willing to risk the night with four soulless green skull monsters and their motorized jaws just for a slice of soggy pizza and a storm drain. Isn't there something so satisfying about sad stuff on the holidays? I hope so, because it's time to create some new painful memories in a very turtle holiday special installment of Clip Breakdown. <laughs> Hello television viewers, my name is Nick. Thank you so much for joining me once again on my channel for another installment of Clip Breakdown. This is the playlist where we dive into our favorite movies, TV movies, and other content on the web, and we snap into it like your favorite holiday bark. Peppermint bark, whatever. <laughs> and we look at each slab of it and we say, that's gonna give you cavities or it's gonna be good for your teeth. As a kid, I really liked the Ninja Turtles because they were like at the height of their 90s popularity by the time I was a conscious little dip. But my goodness, the more you look back at anything that the Ninja Turtles brand touched throughout the 80s and 90s, the more horrifying it seems to become. It seems like this was put out around the same time to compete with other kids programs like Power Rangers putting out a holiday special. But oh my gosh, is this one, this makes me like, I felt sick. Maybe because it takes place where poop is. We'll get into it, but first make sure you give this video a big thumbs up if you wanna see even more clip breakdowns like this from me this holiday season. But most importantly, if you're new to my channel, I would love to have you click that subscribe button right over here. That way you never miss new videos from me. I upload two new ones a week, so turn on notifications. I've also got merch and a Patreon where you can get bonus content. Oh, the year is 1994. We're under New York City. Go to the theme song, Charles. We laugh and sing and do our thing with the turtles. First of all, laughter and singing is not really something I'd necessarily expect from either ninjas or turtles. I feel like we're no longer even trying to uphold the gimmick that any of these goofy characters are capable of fighting crime. And yes, that's the same line I gave to the police department at their holiday charity auction. Also, I could have sworn, based on the names anyway, that the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles were Italian American. So I'm not sure why the theme song would include the stereotypically East Asian Oriental riff when it should obviously be that accordion song that they play when the pizzas come out at bar mitzvahs. Confession time, I feel like I talk about bar and bat mitzvah activities a lot, but I was only ever invited to one in my childhood. Thank you, Elise. I thought the sea turtle theming was lovely. Anyway, I'm sure the next few songs won't have any cultural appropriation. Hey kids, how about helping me sing my favorite Christmas song? The holes with pepperoni. Fa la 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 la. No, Leonardo, we are not going to deck the halls with pepperoni. What would that even look like? You want us to command hook some slices of cured meat to the walls? I can't believe you would suggest something to make it smell even worse down here. We're sitting in sh water. I'm not sure I'll ever understand why this had to be a reggae version of the song, but one of the actors underneath those helmets better be Jamaican. Otherwise, I would need to ask that either this tempo gets tightened up or we drop the bad Bob Marley impression. What do you say, Ninja Turtles? <laughs> not diddly doity doy doy. I'm actually starting to hope that this special is dialogue heavy because the music so far has not aged well and we're 29 seconds in. Actually, I would even just be grateful if the rest of this scene could just be a little more comfortable to watch. Wait till you see what I got Wait. you. Totally awesome. All I want to know is what you got for us to give the splinter. Uh, just a note from the sound department. Let's try not to have a full moment of silence for the fallen veterans between every line because the mic is picking up a lot of clacking puppetry that sort of becomes more noticeable during that dead air. 
When we tried to oil the joints of Michelangelo with WD-40, he almost bit my finger off. So it seems like those masks are starting to think and move independently of human control. These clanking animatronic puppet masks are some of the most unsettling Ninja Turtles I've seen in my life. Like that's creepy. Do you know how hard it is to reduce the natural sex appeal of these studs? The face and torso of a turtle with the arms and legs of a basketball player? I'm already having fun. Why would they even use the practical sound that they recorded from the set? They could have just muted the live action track and just like recorded new sounds. Probably because they didn't have the budget for room tone or adding in Foley sound effects for all of the papers and the rustling. So they were like, let's just use the real sound and layer the voice over over it. Could also explain why the timing is off. They might not have had people actually speaking on set. They were just acting it out to get the clean sound. Couldn't say, but I do know that this movie, according to IMDb, had a total budget of $5,000. And to me, I'm like, what, how? Even those costumes alone times five shouldn't have cost $5,000. What? But let's just jump into the story. It seems like these teenagers forgot to buy a gift for their dad sensei rat friend. Nobody got a gift for Splinter? It's Christmas Eve. The stores are closing. Now we have to get a gift for Splinter. Should we restate that conflict a third time for clarity? I just want to make sure the kids at home can follow along even if their parents didn't play Mozart for them in the womb. Also, there was a point during that last shot where we, the audience, were looking up into the opening of the actor's Ninja Turtles helmet. Like, I can see that the guy underneath has a ponytail. That's how convincing these costumes are. I couldn't find the source, but I remember at one point reading that with the live action animated series, these animated helmets and masks and eyeballs were one of the biggest reasons the show did not last more than two seasons. It took up a lot of time on set, it had a lot of mechanical issues, and it was not easy to work with. How did somebody get enough cell phone reception to live stream their journey to hell down the river Styx? Honestly, I feel like all these pure flicks jokes I've made will be worth it. Because these smooth, green, hairless turtle demons hanging out at the gates of hell have clearly never skipped leg day. Beefy. Sorry, I can't stop sexualizing the Ninja Turtles. It's just that I've known them for so long, they're like brothers to me. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. That's a joke. How awful. How awful to say stuff like that on Christmas Eve. Christmas Eve with the angel on the tree. Making jokes about, uh carnal relations on Christmas Eve. That $5,000 budget comes really clear. They're like walking up old stairs and it looks like they just shined one big floodlight at them. And I'm just like, okay, harsh shadows. I guess since it's in the sewer, they were like, we can accept any number of weird shadows in these lights. That's why we see like the cameraman doing the full on moonwalk in the silhouette. The turtles finally breached the surface. America, get ready. I'm sorry, do these youth percussionists not have a home to go to on the night of Christmas Eve? Wow, they wanna be Angel from Rent so bad. Well, I'm not buying it unless at least one of those kids has AIDS. Just so the Ninja Turtles know, this is like a super sad thing to show on Christmas. I would call someone to take these kids in, but they're all just smiling so much that eh, I'm sure they're just runaways who are high on drugs. Merry Christmas, children. Nice beat. Oh wait, no, we're not done with them. The Ninja Turtles have to harass them during this song. I'm not saying I read like every issue of the comic books or whatever, but as far as I can remember, this is the only Ninja Turtles storyline where the evil antagonists seem to be New York City's nearly one in three children facing hunger. Who made the decision for these kids? I guess because it matches with like the fact that the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles are like underground. Like these kids are so underground that they don't even have loving parents. Honestly, we could improve the lives of children like this in our country and throughout the world by tackling taxes, which I know, boring to talk about, but taxes will help put money back into the pockets of workers rather than into these huge corporations that aren't paying their fair share. This type of tax revenue can support education, healthcare, childcare investments. Anytime that we invest into those types of systems, we're helping to reduce racial inequalities and improve gender justice. When you learn that the mega wealthy 
in this country pay some of the lowest tax rates out of anybody. And then others who are not even getting a living wage have to hand over a bigger portion of their money when they don't even have enough to get by on. For me, it just instantly brings to mind all of the ways that that's going to be oppressive specifically to women and people of color who are already disadvantaged in so many other ways in the workforce. That's why I think voting for politicians who want to help rebalance the power and redistribute wealth in this country is really important. And I think that looking at their tax plans and being aware of how we plan to tax the rich is a really great strategy to keep in mind when you're voting. How about a set of golf clubs? Splinter's not athletic. Yikes, I'm not sure that kid on rollerblades is super athletic either. He took that turn a little sharp back there. I'm not saying this child actor lied on the special skills section of his resume, but perhaps he embellished just enough that we shouldn't have the adults in costumes that they can't see out of twirling him around without a helmet. If this happened to me, I would be traumatized for years about the huge, man-sized, strong, sexy turtles who came up and embraced me. God, stop it, Nick. A gold dog in the sewer, baby. That kid was never seen again. They slid him right down a drain pipe that feeds into the Hudson River. <laughs> but we still gotta get a gift, gotta get a gift, gotta get a gift for Splinter. Taxes or no taxes. Splinter's gonna katana your faces off if you don't have something good from Brookstone. I'm now starting to feel like these children are actually making fun of the overall tone of this piece with their unrealistic drum playing. Gotta get a gift, 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 gotta get a gift for Splinter. Nope, I take it back. I guess that kid is being 100% serious with those moves. Did you see him just remind the little girl on screen to smile? And then they used that part of the take? You're not the director, Ethan, and mom said not to boss me around on set when we booked the same gig. Oh, to be a child actor. Eh, bad idea. I wouldn't want to. Did you see that drum kid? He was like, like, mama, you joking. Patty cake over there is more on her knees than on her bucket. You're more on your knees than on your bucket. That sounds a lot more derogatory than it is, but <laughs> I'm gonna let it fly. They only have two hours to shop, but they waste one of them Christmas treeing. I don't know why this is such a quotable line from this special. The opera guy is one of their disguises, I guess. He's turning into that opera guy again. Oh, little city of New York, this Give the bell back to Santa, Raphael. No kids are gonna wanna come near you if you don't have any lips to hide those bone-crushing teeth. I'm terrified of snapping turtles. I just had to tell you all that. Let's, let's move on. I don't know if they chose this particular intersection of West 44th and Broadway. Oh, it's Times Square. It's just really old Times Square when you could drive through it. I didn't know if that was like a Sabaro product placement back there. What brand of pizza did the Ninja Turtles eat? It's different every movie because of different licensing deals. They've got one hour, but the turtles finally make it to the shopping bazaar. Yeah, sneakers. I dig these, dude. I'm on the cover, yeah. man. Tubular! I, I like that. that's happening, Raph. All right, skate. Oh. Totally bodacious! More of that trademark natural pacing. Tag yourself. I'm the tubular skateboard with the trailing voiceover that says, All right, skate. Tubular! I, I like well, that's that. happening, Raph. All right, skate. Oh. What store are they even shopping at right now? The bedsheet and Christmas light emporium of garbage? Also, please don't tell me that we climbed up all the way from within the sewage system just for you to settle on that petrified, fossilized, overcooked pizza in a frame for your sensei. Even for literal gutter creatures, you four are trashy. Of course, you can't give a gift without wrapping, and you can't wrap a gift without the wrap wrap. See it again, y'all, the wrap wrap, wrap wrap, the wrap. Ew, stop going in for close-ups on those Jimmy Dean sausage link fingers. I'm still queasy from the brown pepperoni nipples on that weird plastic pizza. They say some of the worst music for the very end. They said, do you want a long song? How about the 12 days of Christmas made even more annoying? I don't think there's a worse Christmas song ever. Let me check. Dominic the donkey is much worse. But then again, time is money. So if the song is long, it's gonna ruin my whole night. And the 12 days of Christmas, you know how long it is because it's like counting down to being over the whole time. Ugh, so much anxiety as a child. I hate the holidays. <laughs> Turns out. Five video games. Ew. 
is that your full list of demands before you let the little girl go safely. Please, her mother is very worried about her. Now that she's being asked about it on TV, pretty sure this is the same child who was waywardly drumming on the sidewalk a few minutes ago. So very convenient timing for this concerned parent charade. But that's not what this movie's all about. Do you like your garbage with a little sermon on top? Do you like your nasty Sunday with a little preachiness in the end? I am grateful to you for the many gifts you have given me. But I fear that perhaps we have lost sight of the true meaning of this special time. Damn, Splinter, nobody wants to hear thank you, but. Also, you better tread carefully, you Chuck E. Cheese without hair conditioner. The Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles like a nice secular Christmas season, even though, you know, semantically it doesn't make sense. We're still gonna stay away from anything too Bible related. Although the Bible did have giant rats in it. Just kidding, that was the Princess Bride. Although the Princess Bride was based on the Bible. Just kidding, that was the Chronicles of Narnia. Yeah. Although the Chronicles of Narnia, actually, I gotta stop myself. Sometimes my brain gets caught in one of these pointlessly sardonic loops to the point where I have to go get my brain chemistry reset at the doctor's office. Hold on, I'm gonna see if I can fight through it. <laughs> okay. I think I made it. The Ninja Turtles insist that we can all sing along with this last song, but I'm like, um, no we can't. Can you put some words on screen? We wish you a Turtles Christmas. We wish Looks like nobody bothered to give these kids a copy of the lyrics once they change over from traditional Merry Christmas because suddenly not one of them wants to make eye contact with the camera. They said, Merry Christmas, Leonardo, and Mary go Vespucci, Edelweiss Christmas, gonna see you again. Good enough, kids. Go die on the streets because Christmas is just around the corner and you don't have a chimney. <laughs> You would have to sit through the entire credits to get this Easter egg gem that I'm bringing you. A post credit scene, audio style. The Ninja Turtles still babbling in the background. I really like that Donatello watch. Wait a minute. I think it stopped, man. What's going on out there, man? Hey, give me some of that. Um, are those teenage turtles being audibly paranoid drug users back there behind the end credits? Wow, I guess these aren't the giant humanoid turtles that I thought they were from that group sex video I saw of them online. And that's all she wrote for Ninja Turtle Christmas. <laughs> we wish you a turtle Christmas. Know what I love? Chocolate turtles, because there's caramel and nuts in them. So that's what I want for Christmas. What did you guys think of this special? Did you see it as a child? What other Christmas specials? specials from children's TV are good to watch. Let me know in the comments below. Also give this video a big thumbs up if you wanna see me cover even more Christmas specials this holiday season. Definitely leave links in the comments below. But most importantly, if you're new to my channel, I would love to have you click that subscribe button right over here. That way you never miss new videos from me. I upload two new ones every week, so turn on notifications and you'll always be the first to know when I've got five video games. Also, I've got merch and a Patreon available where you can access bonus monthly content like a virtual watch parties and extra live streams. You guys are all the greatest. Thank you for climbing out of the gutter to buy some frozen pizza with me today. I will see you next time.